Meet Steph. Steph is a proud first year psychology student and is about to take her first exam. When asked about her study methods, Steph boasted about her learning strategy, claiming it takes the least amount of effort, but is the most effective. As with most of her other classmates, Steph flips through her lecture slides, reading them over and over again. Steph believes that she is ready to ace Psych 1020. Meet Sally. Sally is also a first year psychology student. When asked about her study methods, Sally said that she is guided by the famous catchphrase that Robert Bjork used in 1992, desirable difficulties. During her study sessions, Sally tested herself multiple times using practice quizzes. She firmly believes that this is the most effective study method. Sally is quietly confident that she will ace the Psych 1020 exam. Fortunately, Sally got an A. Unfortunately, Steph got an F. I don't understand. I studied so effectively. Why can't I remember anything? It seems like Steph's study method wasn't so effective after all. So why did Sally get an A and Steph an F? Because Sally took advantage of a phenomenon called the testing effect. The testing effect is a general finding that long-term memory is improved when information is retrieved. How does this work, you may ask? Well, the retrieval of the information leads to development of better retrieval structures. These improved structures, in turn, improve access to the information stored in long-term memory. So each time Sally took a practice test or used her flashcards, she had to retrieve the Psych 1020 information. This improved her retrieving structures and ultimately gave her better access to the information when taking the exam. Many researchers support the idea of a testing effect, which has been found to be a robust phenomenon that generalizes to various populations and settings. For example, a meta-analysis in 1991 found a significant testing effect in 83% of 35 classroom studies, where the effect size increased with more repeated testing. So Steph, do you now see that your study methods are not as effective as you thought? Now now Steph, how can you deny the evidence? Okay okay, no need to get angry. Let's look at some more work done by scientists. Maybe that will convince you. The participants of a 2006 study learned a scientific passage. Some participants used a repeated studying method, like Steph does, and others used a repeated testing method, like Sally does. When these participants were tested on their memory of the passage, five minutes after their study session, the ones that used the repeated studying method performed the best. Don't get too happy, Steph. When the participants were tested on their memory one week later, the participants who used the repeated testing method performed 50% better than those that used the repeated studying method. Similar results were found in a 2008 study, which had participants learn the vocabulary of a foreign language. One week after the study session, the participants that used repeated testing performed much better than those that used the repeated studying. How do you see, Steph? This is why Sally performed better than you did. It's not you, it's your studying method. Do not fret, Steph. You can take advantage of the testing effect as well. Whenever you have an exam or need to remember some information, all you need to do is repeatedly test yourself. This will feel like a lot of effort, but it will be well worth it in the end. Just ask Sally. Now remember, you can't just do practice tests and not mark yourself on them. You need to correct your mistakes. You need to get feedback on your performance as you go along to ensure the information stored in your long-term memory is accurate. If you take on the repeated testing method, you will do well in all your future exams. Now, here are the previous 10 years practice exams for Psych 1030.